Can you ever have too many Yugos in one movie? Hello everyone and welcome to Movie Reviews by Josh. My name is Josh Terry and today I stand before this quirky wallpaper to tell you about a quirky comedy. Found this on Amazon Prime a few days ago. Uh, it's one I've actually seen several times in the past but decided to check it out again. It's called Drowning Mona. It came out in 2000, was directed by Nick Gomez. And I was really, really surprised to see that it only had a 5.7 IMDb rating out of 10, uh, which just seems way off to me because like I said, I've seen this a few times in the past. It was kind of a quirky offbeat favorite, not one of my top 10 comedies of all time, but definitely not a 5.7. So with a little nervousness, I decided to check it out and see if it was one of those movies that, oh my goodness, watching it as an adult is very, very different from when I saw it 15, 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, the good news is it's still a funny comedy that holds up. It's still not going to be an all-time top 10, but it's definitely worth talking about. Drowning Mona is one of these kind of offbeat ensemble comedies that has all kinds of people in the cast that people that you recognized at the time, people who went on to be stars in the future. Uh, there's all kinds of Three Dog Night songs on the soundtrack, and everyone in the movie drives a Yugo, which was a car that was really kind of crazy and offbeat back in the 1990s. Um, it's set in a small town in upstate New York, and again, everyone in town is driving a Yugo because the idea is that that car company had some kind of a deal with the town to have them test out their new automobiles. And so everyone in town drives these quirky little two-door hatchbacks uh, that are just always on the verge of falling apart even when they're brand new. So there's just that's just one example of kind of the, the, the strangeness that, that kind of pervades the tone of this movie. Uh, but the whole plot is centered around a murder mystery. Because at the very beginning, a woman named Mona Dearly, who's played by Bette Midler, goes to take a drive and goes off a cliff because her brakes don't work and suddenly she drowns. And the big question in the movie is who actually killed this woman because the brake lines were cut and so they determined that it was a murder. Uh, the twist, of course, as you probably can guess, is that there are too many suspects, right? Because the Mona Dearly character was just this notorious, awful person who just treated everyone like crap from her family to her neighbors to anybody around. And so the challenge for the local police chief who's played by uh, Danny DeVito is not to find the murderer, but just to try to eliminate anybody and everybody who has a motive. So one of the highlights of Drowning Mona is its expansive cast. And I'll just give you a hint of who's in this right now. Like I already mentioned, Danny DeVito is in it. Bette Midler is in it. Uh, Casey Affleck is one of his first roles. It's the first thing I've ever seen him in, and he is just unbelievably young. Uh, Nev Campbell plays his fiance. Uh, you've also got uh, Will Ferrell in kind of a out of nowhere supporting role. I think he might have still been on Saturday Night Live at the time this was recorded. And uh, speaking of uh, com comedians in, of the future, Melissa McCarthy even turns up in a very small role that you almost kind of have to do a double take to realize it's her. And that's just scratching the surface. There's all kinds of people throughout this. Uh, again, names you'll recognize and then faces you'll recognize. It's just, yeah, I know that guy. And so, so that's one of the fun things. Again, the quirkiness is definitely another draw. Uh, the humor is very offbeat between the, you know, the soundtrack and the quirk. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis is also in this. I'm, I'm thinking of other people as I'm talking now. Um, but uh, one thing that, that was a little bit surprising, you know, it's a PG-13 movie. And uh, I knew that there was kind of a subplot about infidelity and different people sleeping with different people uh, that was part of the intrigue about trying to figure out who had the motive to kill the Bette Midler character. Um, what I didn't remember was that the sexual content is pretty frequent. Um, it's definitely at a PG-13 level. Uh, the movie's rated PG-13. Uh, there's, there's some language, um, one use of the, the F word, um, there's also, you know, some, some comic violence, uh, pretty much played for laughs. Um, but there, there is kind of a steady stream of, of sexual content that, again, is definitely PG-13. It's definitely not R, but it definitely makes Drowning Mona a bad option as a family-friendly comedy. And so know that it is a definitely, like, pinned down PG-13 movie, just, just right down the line. So I mentioned earlier that one of my motivations in seeing this, well, I mean, part of it was just that I hadn't seen it in a while. I thought, hey, there's Drowning Mona, I'll go check it out. Um, but I was kind of intrigued by the idea that it had such a low rating on IMDb. 
And uh, after re-watching it, 5.7 is way, way too low on this. I mean, this is not a, an 8, 9, or a 10, but I would give this a solid 7 out of 10 if it was the IMDb rating, and I'd call it a 3 out of 4 for my star rating. So what's your favorite ensemble comedy? Leave your answer in the comments below. So thanks for watching. This has been Movie Reviews by Josh. My name is Josh Terry, and I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe on your way out. Make sure to keep the notifications on so that you can see our new videos as soon as they're posted. And have yourself a great day, no matter what you're driving.